So here's our update. As you can see, LMC came through with the front bumper. That's their $200, I think, premium uh, bumper, which came out really nice. Bolted up with all the brackets with no issues at all, which anytime you can put a bolt in every place that it's supposed to be, including the brackets, before even making adjustments, that's a good day. Also, the front end has been lowered a little bit more, as well as the rear. These are the Beltec lowering springs, and those are, of course, like you spoke about before. Real similar gaps between the two. And of course, leave a little room for payload. Also, we showed last time, I think, roll pan is welded in, but the tailgate showed up as well. That's uh, about a $200 tailgate from LMC. Came in with almost no damage. You can see the edge curled right here a little bit, which is not the end of the world to do a little fixing up. Since I was having to do some body work anyway, and get these corners uh, smoothed in real nice on both sides. Putting these weather strips in, in this uh, wing window, that's work, but we got it done. Pro tips, what is this, number 12 or 13? It'll be on the screen right here. Put the glass, and the, put the regulator in, then the glass, then install the wing window, then set the rear track in, bolting it only at the top here. Don't put this bolt in yet. Then you can run the weather strip and you're done. It's work, but if you do it in the right order, you can save yourself some effort. Also, sometimes people put this strip on the outside of the metal. I just wanted to point out that that's actually optional. If I were to put this on the outside instead of tucking it inside the door skin, it wrinkles all the way around the cur curves. So, I chose to go this route and tuck it in. And honestly, it fits nice and it looks good. Of course, if your finish isn't brand new like we are on this project, you probably want to cover that up. Also, I did leave these out. I have new ones, uh, new hardware for the wing window. But since we're going to get the glass tinted, there's no point in putting those in. Cool. But today's project is the audio system. And we're going to do something pretty simple. I uh, ordered this stuff from Crutchfield. I actually already had this amp and that's why we're using it. It's small. It can mount under the underside of the dash, which is cool. It's 45 watts RMS, which fits within the recommended ranges of both the CS series Kicker 6x9s and the top of the line KSC series 3 and a half which there's a pair of these in the dash where the 4x10 would be. Also, this is 2020. No one needs an AM FM radio and certainly don't need a CD player. So we're going with just a Bluetooth receiver, which I have the same thing in my boat and I've never looked back. And this thing's pretty cool. So you only drill this small hole wherever you need it to be. It'll pair with your device and then Play, you know, play, pause, volume up and down, and track skip forward and backwards. And it's backlit. It's super thin. Maybe a half inch it sticks out from the dash. So we'll mount that where the factory radio was. But because we're using the Envision dash, it should look super clean. So we'll just drill that and have it right here. Before you go drilling holes and permanently mounting everything, hook all your stuff up and test it. And see if that works. Right here on the screen. So yeah, that it's works. Pretty straightforward install. This kit is from JMX Auto Sports. I uh, bought it on eBay, came with the hitch.
Ah, it looks nice. Doesn't stick out too far. Dash is all in, tidied up. Came out looking really nice. I don't mind the background background color either. Now, I do want to point out in proper fashion of pro tips. I had hooked up speaker wire for the rear and ran them back to the back where we're going to build uh, enclosures for the six by nines. and tested them before installing all that stuff in the dash. So we know we're good to go. Now on to the enclosures. All right, so any good fabricator is gonna start out with a tape measure and then a notepad, which requires a pen or pencil. I don't typically make mistakes, so pens are fine. Next step, template. I use old boxes from anything that you've eaten. And you can notice I've cut this template to shape and I've even drawn the lines of the interior thickness of the wood. Therefore, if you're curious if your magnet's going to clear, you can draw that on there and the depth and the width of the magnet to make sure it's not going to interfere with the inner structure of your enclosure. So, this also allows you to somewhat put it in place and check for any obstructions along the way. So, that's the seat belt there. Also, clearance from the seat, which is fine. And inside the cab corner. So, make templates, kids and we can add our width as we need to. You can also just trace this on the wood before cutting it, which probably saves a ton of time as well. But use a straight edge, always a good idea. Right, I'm certainly certainly no carpenter, but this is the one enclosure. Figured before we build both of them, which the wood's cut for the second one, but before we try to assemble the second one, maybe test fit this one first, and I'll cut the hole and probably glue on the inside of some of these seams and leave it laying on its side overnight. So that seals up real nice. Anyway, let's see how this goes. Not a lot of room for carpet, but there's some that'll make that fit nice and snug when it comes under this radius. All the way over. Covers up this opening nice. There's just enough overlap behind the seat to keep it pinned in place. And that 6x9 opening will be right here where the sound can still come out into the cab. For those of you wondering, with one of these square body trucks, this box is six inches at the base. It's three inches at the top. It's 14 inches overall height. Um, and it makes this front piece about 14 and a quarter, uh, 14 and three eighths length. You know what, Kicker? Because I'm sure the folks at Kicker watch my videos. How about some stencils in the box? I mean, they're a hundred dollar pair of speakers. I know that's not extremely expensive, but how hard would it be to throw in some pieces of paper with at least a dotted line drawn on them for what size the cutout is. So, 
I've laid the speaker where I needed to sit, Tracy outside, and then given myself three eighths to a half inch inside line. Okay, so we're in day two. Uh, this is the box we finished yesterday. Got another one over there being assembled now. Just wanted to go over another pro tip for you, probably number 14 by now. Uh, if you're building something that you're gonna carpet, you might wanna just bevel the edges a little bit. If you have a router, that'd be super fancy, but even like I use a angle grinder with this flapper bit or any kind of sandpaper, and just sort of go around the edges, knock the sharp, sharp corners off so it lets the carpet wrap on it much easier. Um, I'm gonna use this uh, 3M adhesive, uh, spray adhesive, which I had for other projects. You wanna spray this on both sides, both on the wood and on the carpet, let it sit up and get tacky and then wrap it. Also what's real handy is a pneumatic or electric nail gun, uh, stapler, so you can just wrap the material and pin it in place immediately one-handed. Honestly, doing any kind of woodwork, you should have one of these. You can spend about a hundred bucks for a hobby type one. And uh, trust me, it'll save you a ton of heartache. There's one. All right. We've got them carpeted, wired, and the speakers installed. By the way, I always run these down with a screwdriver instead of a cordless drill. I did pre-drill the holes for these screws with a 16th inch bit, but you really don't want to break your speaker grills, tighten them down before you ever get to use them. The only way to get a good feel for that is tighten them by hand. So anyway, these are complete. Now I'll have to do some tuning with the gains, etc., on the amp, but these are full range speakers with kind of a crossover network built into them, so they should be fine. Also want to point out that I put a one and a half inch by 12 inch port in this one just to try. I do think it opened up some of the lower frequencies, so I'll get one and install it in that one as well. These are set. Steel roll pan on our 81C10. That's it. Stereo is in the truck. It sounds pretty good for a budget. Remember, a couple of six by nines, a couple of three and a halves, uh, an amp that runs 45 watts RMS per speaker, and that uh, JL Bluetooth receiver that's made for marine use, but it really looks nice in there and sort of simplifies things, especially since I didn't have any holes in that dash uh, panel. So, didn't want to cut out a huge um, opening. Or some radio that wouldn't serve me any better than just a simple Bluetooth receiver. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I've got the seat on order and we'll get the door panels on their way as well. Also get the windows tinted pretty soon before you see us next time. Hope you like it. Click like, click subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.